Hey, this is Martin from Imagineer Systems. If you're involved in any form of visual effects or motion graphics, and I assume you are since you're watching this, at some point you're going to have to make a smartphone look like it's doing something. There are several roadblocks with phones that can cause major issues for screen insertion. Firstly, the new models, such as iPhones and the majority of Android phones, are really, really shiny. Reflections are a pain because the tracker has no clue that the thing moving across your surface is not actually the surface, but something behind the camera view. Secondly, in order to show any proper interaction with the phone, you need to have someone physically touching the screen, which means you not only get a gigantic obstruction across your trackable area, but also a much clearer, more intrusive reflection on the aforementioned shiny clean screen. All this means you end up with very little trackable area to work with, so here's one example of how to get around it in Mocha. First of all, I should point out that this is not actually an iPhone, it is, in fact, an iTouch. I know the Apple fans out there will appreciate that I make this distinction. In order to track something like this, we're first going to find out what frame the biggest obstruction is on. This helps to avoid further tweaking later and saves time. Because we're dealing with both an obstruction and a reflection surface, I'm going to draw a shape around where they both won't cause a problem, namely around the edges of the phone and the tips of the fingers. Although we've got ample coverage on the right, I'm also going to use Add Spline to Layer to add an additional shape around the corner over on the left to really stabilise the shot. I'll then up the minimum percentage of pixels used to about 90% to capture more detail and switch on perspective on my track. I'm also going to use auto channel as my input since we have a lot of similar luminance values where I'm tracking, so I'll probably pull better detail from one of the colour channels. Now I'll track backwards from the frame I just drew the shape on. Once the backward part of the track is done, we go back to the starting frame where we drew the splines and track forward, but first I'm going to set up my surface and grid. It's very useful to have these on while you are tracking, as you can immediately see if a track is having any problems and stop the track to correct it. Because of their random shape, splines are often not a good indicator of track accuracy. So now we've got that set, let's just track forwards and we'll finish off the shot. Once we have the phone tracked, we can move on to the finger. We just need to do a rough shape around here and track the overall motion so we can link it to a refined mask next. We're using the same settings as before, tracking 90% pixels, auto channel, and in perspective. We only need to track and mask the section of time where the finger is actually covering the screen, so we can stop the track before it completes the timeline. Once we have that, we can name it finger track and move on to the mat itself. We draw a much more refined shape around the finger this time, making sure we get all the bumps and curves. When you're doing roto, it's often useful to turn on your mat in Mocha and then turn off your splines. This way you see the edge of the mat easier when you're doing subtle refinements. Let's just name this finger mask and link it to the finger track from the link to track drop down. Now we'll move along with the finger tracking data we did earlier. Once we've linked the road to the track, we can then actually go to layer properties and restrict the in and out points of that layer so we don't see the finger mat for the entire time frame. This will reflect both in the window and the viewer, and when we export out to Final Cut. Once we have the overall motion, we can now go in and refine the mat to mask any softening due to motion blur or depth of field. In the full version of Mocha and Mocha Pro, you can generate the motion blur automatically and render it to file. However, Mocha AE can only export data, so we need to do it manually. Holding the Alt key gives us access to the outer and inner edges of each control point, so we can quickly adjust the amount of feather. We can also set an overall edge width for the set of points by selecting them and defining a pixel value in the edge width field and clicking set. Now all these points are set with the same 4 pixel edge width. Right, rather than boring you with a tweak by tweak roto, I've actually just loaded in a different file where I've got the tracking data and the final roto done. So we can see our finger mask here, it's got the mat following along with the file there. And so we can now start exporting this stuff out to Final Cut. So we've got our phone track, which I'm going to just adjust on the corners here a little bit. And we can now come down to Export Tracking Data to export the file. It's already got Final Cut Distort selected in Mocker AE, but you can select either After Effects Files, Final Cut, or Motion. In this case, we're going to stick with Final Cut Distort. And then we can save that to File. It'll automatically choose the layer name to save with, so we can just save that. I've already got one here, so we'll just replace it. And click Yes. Now we can go to the finger mask and do the same for the shape data. So we'll just move into the timeline where the shape data is showing. And we'll come down to Export Shape Data. 
choose one of the options, in this case we're going to use Mocha Shape Data for Final Cut, get our selected layer selected, and then save. Again it chooses the layer name, and we can save that XML out to file. Okay, so here we are in Final Cut, um, we've got our footage in place, and we've also got an insert which I've set up just recording from our website, you can see the delightful Mary Poplin doing a demo here, and you can see here on the edges of the file that it doesn't quite fit the footage dimensions. This is important, I'm just going to quickly show you the uh, clip settings for this one. You can see that the dimensions do not fit the same, this is 614 by 406 let's just cancel that, and let's also look at this one, and you can see that this one is 1280 by 720 so the dimensions are not the same. So when we export out our distortion data, you can see here, it's not going to match the same dimensions as the footage that we've got in Final Cut. So I'm just going to save this again to quickly show you the example. And then once we've saved that and brought it across, we can import that file. And let's just get the phone track. Choose that. Bring it in with default settings. And then we can copy and then paste the attributes down on our insert making sure we turn off scale attribute times because that clip is longer and click on distort and then OK and what you'll see is, is that it will go into the correct position but won't be filling the screen because the dimensions of the footage are actually different so now we'll go, I'm going to undo that and then show you the correct method to actually get around this Right, so let's just delete this file in the bin, and let's switch back to Mocha. So, you can see our dimensions are set up here for the corner pin, which is normally correct if we've got the right footage dimensions. But for this one, we want to use a line surface to actually blow up our surface to the full frame. So if I click that, you'll see that now if I select my track, that it's fitting the corners of our dimension. And when we scrub the timeline, you'll see that the track is now relative to the dimensions of the footage and not the screen. So now when we export this out, we'll be able to use it as a nested clip inside Final Cut instead. So let's just export it again with those changed dimensions. And we can switch back to Final Cut and do the nesting. So now back in Final Cut, we can use the Distort tool to actually distort these corners to the edge of our screen in the footage. So we just click and hold our Crop tool down here and pick the Distort tool. And then we can start manipulating these corners to adjust to the iPhone screen. So I'm just going to drag this down and fit to that corner. So we're just doing a manual process here to distort this screen into place. And then we can actually set up our nest to actually fill this to the full dimensions of our original footage. So we've got that in place. I'm just going to nudge that corner a little bit. And then once we have this, we can then go up to nest in sequence. So sequence, nest items, and then we check to make sure that we're going to be setting it to the same dimensions as our footage which is 1280 by 720 let's just call this website insert distort or nest okay and now you can see that it's actually filling if I select it you can see it's filling the dimensions of that screen so when we bring in the dimensions from the mocha footage it will actually match up so I'm just going to import that XML now so the same phone track file that we've changed again default settings and then we can do the same process so I'm going to copy paste those attributes again turn off scale attribute times and then use to sort and OK and that will follow on correctly so we've got this screen distorted now, but it looks like it's just sitting on top of the phone. So we want to make it look a little bit better. Let's right click, go to composite mode and change that to screen. And this will just bring in some of those reflections that are underneath the insert there. You'll be able to see that reflection of the shadow coming through and it just makes it a bit more realistic. There's other modes you can try like multiply and overlay and stuff, but screen is usually the best one in these situations. Now we just need to bring in our finger to cover up the rest so we go to our XML, choose our finger mask, and just click choose. Again, leave those default. Like with all footage, it's a good idea to check to make sure that the aspect ratio is correct. So I'm going to go into item properties, 
And we can see here that the pixel aspect ratio has actually been set to HD by Final Cut and not square, which is what we want. So I'm going to right click this and choose square, just to make sure we're all on the same page. And then we can click OK. Then we can just drag this file down on top like another piece of footage. And our finger should now be sitting on top of the rest of the footage. Cut out nicely because we did that roto before inside Mocha. So now we just need to check to make sure it's uh, rendering out okay. So Command R to render and we'll write it out. So now that that's done we'll just backtrack and playback and you can see our finger compositing nicely over the top of our screened insert. So that's how you track and roto a phone inside Mocha AE and then composite it inside Final Cut. If you have any questions about today's tutorial please feel free to go to our forum at forum.imagineersystems.com. This has been Martin Brennan for Imagineer Systems.